Hello! Welcome to Code Zero, a series of videos that explores the world of code. My name is Pragma. Have a great time learning about code. Hello, and um, thank you for that introduction, Pragma. Welcome to Code Zero at ZimJS.com. I'm Dr. Abstract. In the last Code Zero, we talked about the Zim namespace and the fact that we no longer need the Zim namespace. And in this Code Zero, we're going to talk about chaining, the fact that we can chain methods uh, to make things a little bit simpler, and it's something that we've been doing in a lot of the examples. So uh, let's uh, dig back into the code. So let's talk about chaining. Chaining, like that. It just means making a chain of something. So uh, let's make a new rectangle. We can assign the rectangle to a variable. That's what we've been doing. Var rect, for instance, is equal to a new rectangle. And note that we did not have to say a new zim.rectangle because we don't need the namespace anymore. So var rect is equal to a new rectangle. Uh, let's leave that the default one, and then we can uh, we we could end that, and then we can say rect dot add to stage. Oops, <laughs> we can do it stage like so. And let's take a look and see what that looks like. We open in browser, and unfortunately, the rectangle is is black, so you can't quite see the whole thing properly. Or it's going off into the edge. And we um, getting some sort of on loading cursor. We are running into the dial because we placed the dial there. So uh, we'd want to move that rectangle. But I suppose let's talk about the chaining first. This is two steps, but we can do this in one. You see how we've added the add to to the rect. Well, the rect is the same as new rectangle. So if we wanted to, we could just take the add to and chain it onto the end of the new rectangle, like so. So there, this is the new rectangle object. That's the same as rect. <laughs> and we're just going to add that to the stage right away. We also want to um, position it. Once we've added it to the stage, we want to position it. Now, one thing we can do to make this a bit easier, well, I'll show you the chaining, dot pose. So uh, remember down here last time, I think we talked about the pose. So right here, when we said dial dot pose, and I said at the time, oh, but we, we can chain that. And then I didn't show you chaining because that's a sort of a whole new a whole new thing to talk about. I didn't show you chaining at that time, but now we're showing you chaining. So we can add this rectangle to the stage. And what happens is the add to returns the rectangle. So it's a special type of method. This is a method, and so is this. It's a special type of method that returns the object that sort of replies with the object. So in other words, if I ask what is add to stage, it would tell us the rectangle. And since add to the stage is returning the rectangle, then we're dot posing on the rectangle. That's just like rect right there, dot pose, because this returns it. Pose also returns a rectangle, so we're welcome to keep on chaining other methods, any of the methods that return the object that they're put on. Uh, now do you see why? That's a little bit advanced in concept. It just makes it, um, I think it just makes it a bit easier, but unfortunately it provides an alternative. And sometimes when you're just first starting to learn how to code, alternatives can be tricky. You know, oh, now I have to, uh, there's two ways to do this. I have to remember two ways to do this. Ah! Well, let me show you another way to uh, <laughs> to do our chaining. As you can see, this would start going off the screen. And what we want to do is uh, we can just drop them onto the next line. So we drop them onto the next line and just kind of tab them in to sort of see that all of these things that we're chaining on are operating on this first thing, the rectangle. So. We get a new rectangle, we add it to the stage, we position it. Now, where do we want to position it? Uh, I'm not really sure where. How about 500, comma, 
600. Let's see where that positions our new rectangle. Down here. Let's move it up a bit and over a bit. Now, if you're eyeballing things, that, that can be a bit of a pain. Up a bit. Let's see. Up a bit. 500. So over a bit would be, say, to 600. And up a bit uh, was 600 is 500. Um, now I feel like we're too close to the circle. I just want it over here somewhere, and I don't know where that is. Meh. Well, if you recall, there was the grid. So somewhere in here, I think we just removed it completely. We could add a new grid. We could look at the grid, and we could figure out where we should position this thing. But there is an easier way, and the easier way can be chained. So let's chain that easier way. We can say dot place, like so. So this is another method. I didn't really want to show you this, but just we happen to need it, so may as well. Dot place. Now note when I'm chaining uh, what this looked like before. It had the semicolon at the end of our chain. So we're starting, we're chaining. We cannot put the semicolon there. If we put the semicolon there, then this thing is the next statement. So a semicolon means end the statement. So that would be all of this plus that is all one statement. But this is a, se a second statement and it's not on anything. So we've got this dot that is not on anything because really, you know, let's just bring that back. It's like that. Be just sort of saying dot pose and there'd be nothing there. So if we try to run this, let's save that and try and run it, it will give us an error. Refresh there. Nothing loaded. We hit the F12 and it says syntax error expected expression got a dot. So it expects there to be something else there, but it got a dot. So that's what happens as you as you start chaining. This will happen to you. You'll forget to move the semicolon. So we need to chain another thing onto here on the next line, dot place. And that will not work because we forgot to remove that semicolon. So if we get rid of that, then it works. So now all of this is one statement chained with a dot and a dot and a dot, and now we're finished. Now, because we're not running in strict mode, uh, strict mode requires these semicolons to be on the end. Because we're not running in strict mode, we could just do that. If we know we're going to keep on chaining, it's sometimes easier to not even finish it until you're sort of done. When you're done doing all the things you need to do to the rectangle, then try and remember to put on the semicolon. That's another route to go. If you were in this thing called strict mode, then you would re be required to put the semicolons in there. You could not run it like this. But we can't, like we can, we're not in strict mode, so we could run it like this. I'll still put the semicolon there though. And let's try out what this place does. So we save it, rerun it. There it is back again. Um, what place does is it says place object to get new position. That's a little message that now shows up. And as we move this over, it turns into crosshairs like that. And I can put it where I want. How about right there? So I let go. And now it tells me the object's X is 761. The object's Y is 470. That's how we used to do X and Y all the time. So when we first made place, that was your answer. But now that we have pose, pose was introduced partway through Zim, so about a year ago. Um, now that we have pose, it's telling us what, where would we want, where we would want to pose that object. So we can just copy this right here, or whatever amount of it we want. I'm just copying the pose in the 761 and 470. I come into here and I replace the code that we had with the code that pose told me about. Now I don't need place at all, so I just get rid of it. Delete. And note that when I got rid of it, I deleted it so that the semicolon is now at the end of pose. I usually like to tidy that up a bit. Like, it's because it seems kind of strange if people look in the code and go, oh, they wanted that at 761 pixels. I wonder why they wanted it specifically at 761. Uh, that just looks a little bit... <laughs> <laughs> a little bit easier to read or nicer, <laughs> about 760 and about 470. Okay, so there it is. Uh, 
don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I usually do, and we refresh. And now you can see that that's uh, well, one pixel over from where we had it before. All right, it's been positioned. Now, uh, that's the rectangle, and that's a little bit about chaining then. Uh, we can chain things on the rectangle. Drag is also chainable. So instead of coming down here and saying dot drag, like that, and having to remember to delete this and move it down, uh, we can just do this. We put our cursor there and hit enter, and then say dot drag, like so. Now the rectangle will be draggable. So drag is also chainable. Now we save that and refresh. And now we can drag the circle. Oh. <laughs> the rectangle, I mean. I was just like, we can drag the circle. Um, so that's chaining. And you might be wondering, well, which ones are chainable and which ones aren't? So let's go into the documentation and take a look at the ones that we can chain maybe some of the ones that we can. So here's the documentation. There's drag. So if we were to open up drag and come on down, um, what we need to do is find out what it returns. So the very last thing, it's sort of like, oh, this whole thing's going to run, and then it will return something. So uh, here it says return object for chaining. So this is right down at the bottom of the drag description close that. Um, here is uh, setting up a gesture, so when you can um, make something swipe or, um, or pinch or rotate. And if we come down to the bottom of that, it says return object for chaining, etc, etc, etc. Now, there's a whole bunch of special ones right here, these three letter ones. Curse for cursor, or cur for cursor, sha, Pose, move, alp, rote, sis, ske for skew, reg for registration, ska for scale. Um, all of these three letter uh, commands or methods here, they're replacing properties because we can't chain a property. Um, so these are all things that used to be properties. There's a cursor property, there's a shadow property, there's a, well, there's an X and a Y property, there's an alpha property. So you see we've got the sort of what properties we're changing uh, here in the round brackets, and we're passing them in as methods, methods that do something, that will set those. And the methods can chain. The properties cannot chain. And let's explain why. First of all, if we open up pose, it says a chainable convenience function to position X and Y. All right, and it returns the object for chaining. Now what that means, returns the object for chaining, we haven't really seen returns, but if I view uh, pose, it's not very much at all. We are, ignore the object, um, we are passing in the X and a Y. And so if there, this says basically if there's not not. <laughs> so if there is an X, then set the object, the object is what we're operating on, set the objects X equal to X, set the objects Y equal to Y, and then return the object. So there's hardly any code in behind pose. All it's doing is taking the X and the Y that we pass in and setting the objects X and Y. These are basic properties that are available in CreateJS. This is a method that is available in Zim that makes a shortcut, in a sense, of, of doing two lines. And it returns the object so that we can chain this and not... What chaining will allow us to do is we now really no longer need a variable rectangle. We used to need it when we said rectangle.add to stage, rectangle.pose, rectangle.drag. We used to have to have a variable rectangle to do these in different statements. But now we don't even need the rectangle unless we're going to use it later. And now we just say, make a new rectangle object, add it to the stage, position it, and drag it. So if we can do everything we want to do to the rectangle in chaining, there's no need to even keep a variable. So this becomes less to type and perhaps a little bit simpler, maybe. I don't know, it's hard to say. Uh, we come to the code and we refresh here. We've now still got the rectangle there, dragging just fine. 
Now the only thing is if we wanted to do something, like say find out if uh, the circle hits the rectangle, well now we're a little bit out of luck because we don't have a reference to the rectangle. We'd have to come back and say, uh, well actually we need to know what you are a bit later and then down after we make the circle down here we could ask does the circle hit the rectangle? Okay, or does it hit rect? And we would have a reference to it. Now what I was going to show you is that we cannot chain a property. So uh, we can actually put it right on the end but um, here's what it would look like. So say we didn't use the pose. Another nice thing about chaining, by the way, is we can just comment out. If we put them on new lines, like, uh, like we did, we can comment out the line for that, and then it will no longer be positioned at that. Should we see that? A little bit of a, an aside here. It's back to the, the top, and we can still drag it, but it, its position is no longer down here, so it all works except we've decided not to do that one. And, and that's kind of neat. So if we decide not to do this one and instead try to use dot x is equal to 5, so we're trying to chain on a property and we're trying to move the x position of the rectangle to that, let's just see what happens. We save that, we refresh. Type error 5 dot drag is not a function. Okay, so what's happening is we're making a new rectangle, we're adding it to the stage, but this returns the rectangle. So the next thing, the dot x, is on the rectangle, which is great. But dot x equals 5 does not return the rectangle, it returns 5. So since we're, we've got 5 and put that into dot x, 5 is our current answer, and when we say 5 dot drag, it's trying to drag the number 5. So the chaining part actually works. We could move it over 5 like that. So we've got a rectangle. We've added it to the stage. This returns the rectangle, so now we're saying the rectangle dot x equals 5. And we save that up. Oh, desktop reveal, whoop, 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 desktop reveal. Uh, where do I want to uh, go back here and here? There we go. And I refresh here. You see how it has moved it over five. So right there, it's moved it over five. That's great. There's no error. But now we no longer have access to the rectangle. It's, it's finished. Rect is five. So if we were to zog what rect is, like that. It won't tell us the rectangle anymore because the last thing in our chain was an equals 5. So this 5 ends up getting assigned to that variable rect. It kind of flows all the way through and rect is the result of all of this and the result of it is 5. So when we save that and refresh here, there it is, 5. Okay, whereas if we go back to the chaining of our position there, we don't chain that one. Comment out that line and bring back the drag, that'll all work. And we zog rectangle, it won't tell us 5 anymore. It tells us that it's this object that uh, we know is the rectangle. That's what the rectangle is made of. All of that, all of that stuff is the rectangle. Okay underscore rectangle so far. Alrighty, so that's why we don't chain properties. We can get away with chaining it right on the very end, but um, it's a bit dangerous because we lose track of the variable if, if we have a variable. Right. So instead of using properties to set some of that stuff like alpha, let's do the alpha. We just throw it in here anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Dot alp. And we can go 0.5. So now our, that's it, black, like that. We refresh there, and now its alpha is 0.5. Okay, dot rote for rotation. Oh, not wrong. <laughs> rote for rotation, we can say, please rotate that 45 degrees. Well, that looked funny. Um, we have not yet talked about the uh, registration point. That's going to be um, another 
uh, code zero when we talk about registration point. But note when we rotate that rectangle, we're rotating it about its registration point. So if we imagine and uh, see if you can remember where that is, well, let me just adjust it. Uh, we'll rotate it back to zero, or we could have just taken that away. And watch when we refresh, I'll hold control R here. There. So it's rotating around its top left corner, uh, 45 degrees. A circle would rotate about its center, and that deals with registration point, which we'll have to talk about in a code zero at some point. You have to be careful because the method that we're chaining here needs to return the object. So the coder, whoever built these methods, needs to have built in um, the fact that it can be chained. And it's actually quite rare. There's hardly anything in, in just plain JavaScript that can be chained. There are some things in CreateJS that can be chained. Uh, but in Zim, we've moved towards making as much as makes sense, as, as much as possible uh, chains. And where we couldn't chain, for instance, CreateJS gives us this thing called uh, cache where we can turn a shape into an image so that it runs smoother with the GPU, which is a uh, fast for, say, making game graphics and stuff like that. Um, so CreateJS gave us cache. Cache was not chainable, so we couldn't just chain on dot .cache. Dot .cache like that. Well, we could chain it on in the end and it would work, but uh, we would lose the variable that we could not chain it here, for instance. And some value, 0, 0, comma, uh, how wide is this rectangle? We don't know, whatever the default is, comma, 50. That um, would cache, but that chain would not work in CreateJS. So what we did is we brought it into Zim and we remade it. It's called an override. We said, all right, let's make our own version of it, our own version of cache that is chainable. You have to go in here and methods cache right here. So see container docs for parameter descriptions, overrides the CreateJS cache, and returns object for chaining. OK, so uh, that returns the object for chaining. Like that, not only that, but uh, the CreateJS cache needed us to say how big our rectangle is that we're caching. The Zim cache says, let's just assume that it's as big as it is, so it's, um, it's bounds. And when we cache, it will automatically cache to the bounds. So we just have to say that. And this cache returns the object, the rectangle, so that the next thing we chain, the rotation, is operating on our rectangle, because this returns rectangle. So this is the rectangle. When we chain to it, that returns rectangle. So this gets chained onto the rectangle, which returns rectangle, etc. So all these return the rectangle right to this very last one. This very last one returns a rectangle, and that rectangle gets assigned to rect. Uh, but we may not even need rect. So all of that stuff would work just like that without it. But if we need to access the rectangle later, then we would store it in a variable. And that is chaining. So if we pop on out to the site at zimjs.com and then take a look at these gold bars down at the bottom, there's one on tips. If we press tips, uh, we'll see some of the things that we've been talking about in our code zeros lately, such as the namespace. We no longer need the zim in front of everything. So zim rand can just be rand. Uh, zim circle can just be a new circle. And then here's one on chaining, which we just talked about now, and some extra information about chaining and so forth. Configuration object was a couple uh, couple code zeros ago. We talked about configuration objects, and here it is as well. So you can pop on over to the gold bars and, and have a read of those again, if you so desire. Uh, that's excellent. So it has been a pleasure speaking with you. I am Dr. Abstract at zimjs.com and also uh, a hello and merry holidays from, from Pragma uh, from all of us here at Zim and Code Zero.